Today we're going to show you how to use the FTIR instruments to take both a solid and a liquid IR. To do this, you will need a few things from the lab. You'll need your two unknowns, the liquid and the solid, a clean pipette and a bulb, and a spatula. Both samples will be placed on the plate that you can see there. In the center of it is the diamond, which is that looks like a piece of glass with a light in it. You'll first want to clean that with acetone and make sure it's dry because we're going to run a background before we actually do the sample. Now it's time to run a background. First you need to open the program. It's called Omnic and it's an icon on the screen so you just double click it. The program opens and a window shows up. You want to make sure that it's set for the Smart ITX diamond since we're doing the spectrum on a diamond. So just click OK. Now it's time to run a background. And the icons on the top, you'll see one that says C-O-L-B-K-G. Click on it. It will tell you to prepare to collect it, which just means clean the plate, and you've already done that, so hit OK. The instrument will take four scans. You can see it counting down there in the bottom. And that is a lovely IR of air. You, a window pops up asking if you want to save it to the screen or to the window. Say no, otherwise you're going to be looking at it. Now the background has been run and the machine has saved the data in its memory and will subtract that bad air spectrum from your sample. First, we're going to run a solid IR. So you'll take your solid sample and you're going to want to cover the diamond with some of the solid. You don't need too much, just enough to cover it. So to give you an idea, it looks like that. Now, we have to flatten the solid down to form a thin layer or a wafer over the diamond. So you're going to rotate the pressure tower till it clicks and then turn the black knob, which lowers the pressure tower and presses the solid against the diamond. You'll keep turning until you hear it click. Once it's clicked, you're ready to go. So now you come over to the computer and again along the top, right next to the icon for the background is collect sample. Go ahead and hit it. A window pops up you can change the label of your sample if you want to, or don't bother, hit OK. Then it says prepare, we are prepared, so hit OK. It's going to run four scans. You can see the countdown right there in the end. And there is the solid IR of the sample. And we hit add to the window because we do want to see that. Now you could print it just like this, but you probably want to label the peaks. So go to the icons along the top. There's one that says find peaks. Click it. A black line shows up that's horizontal. Click on the screen where you want the peaks to be labeled as high as you want to go. So you probably want to click a little higher. There you go. Now they're all labeled and you can go over here and hit the replace button. Now your spectrum has been replaced by a labeled spectrum. At this point, it's time to print. Come down, hit print, and if you were in the building, it prints in the hallway. We'll hit cancel since it's turned off. Now we're ready to do the IR of the liquid sample. We clean the solid sample off the diamond using acetone and making sure things are dry just as before. We also used acetone to clean the bottom of the pressure tower. So now the diamond is clean and you just need to apply a few drops of the liquid sample to the diamond. Since the liquids tend to evaporate, we're going to cover it with a lid to slow evaporation down. Then you come over here to collect sample. 
label it or not, and hit OK, and it will start the countdown to four scans. And there is the IR of your liquid sample. We'll do the same thing as before, where we'll label the peaks. You get that black line, click higher up the screen, looks good, hit replace, and there's your spectrum, and at this point, you would go ahead and print. Then to clean off the liquid sample, you just lift the lid and wipe the liquid off the diamond and clean it with some acetone, and you're all done. You want to make sure when you come into the instrument that you run a fresh, fresh background before you start your samples. But you don't need to run a new background in between your samples as long as you don't close the program.